Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan Zicent, doctoral student at the Mechanical Engineering Department from Federal University of Santa Catarina. Today I will present a study about the analysis of error propagation and the measurement of laminar flame speed using constant volume reactor. This study was developed at the Laboratory of Combustion and Thermal Systems Engineering, LabSET. Well, the laminar flame speed is an important physical chemical characteristic of the fuel oxidant mixtures. This characteristic is used to compose a background about the fuel together with other properties. The laminar flame speed serves as an input to models of turbulent combustion and also is used in several models for internal combustion engines, where the combustion is initially laminar. There are several methods to measure the laminar flame speed and the constant volume reactor is one of them. Some of the advantages of this method is using small amounts of fuel allowing for fast measurements and for the measurement of flame speeds in high unburned temperatures and pressures, typical of the applications in internal combustion engines. Recently, the errors induced by the mathematical treatment of the image measurements have been addressed both experimentally and by simulation. For this reason, several guidelines have been suggested to treat these errors. However, there is still a need to quantify the effects of the random errors in the measurement of the input variables, such as temperature, pressure and mass of fuel, in the output results as the equivalence ratio and laminar flame speed. This quantification allows for correctly expressing the uncertainties in the reported results and also for improvements in the experimental setup. Here, we use the Monte Carlo method to produce a large sample of virtual measurements affected by random errors in the input variables and evaluated the statistical properties of large ensemble of final values of laminar flame speed. Here is presented a sector of Schlieren animation and an image of a spherical outwardly propagation laminar flame said flame. The igniters are located in the center of the reactor and at this time instant the flame surface has a radius. It is possible to observe the region of unburned and burned mixture. In this figure is identified the velocities and the flame speeds, assuming the velocities normal to the flame surface. For the transient outwardly expanding flame, the speed of the moving flame front is measured in respect to a coordinate system fixed in the center of the spherical reactor named flame displacement speed, SF, is determined from the time recording of the flame position RFS, this expression. After some assumptions and correlations, the expressions to obtain the flame sheet is presented. The speed of the outwardly propagation spherical flame is affected by the flame stretch and the flame stretch rate K is defined by this correlation. For stretched flames, the laminar flame speed has been related to the consumption speed where the manuscript L is the Markstein length. This equation is known as the linear model. In a more comprehensive model, the laminar flame speed has been related to the consumption speed for this equation is known as the nonlinear model. In summary, the method of measuring the laminar flame speed in a constant volume reactor consist in the following steps. Extracting the time derivative of RF from the images of the experiment using some smoothing technique, calculating the stretch rate, calculating the flame speed in respect to the unburned mixture, curve fitting the linear model, obtaining first estimates of laminar flame speed and Markstein length. After curve fitting the nonlinear model, obtaining the final estimates of laminar flame speed and Markstein length, and finally, evaluating the statistical uncertainties in laminar flame speed. Here is presented the reactor installed at the lab set. The equipment is instrumented with thermocouples, static and dynamic pressure sensors, inject septum, spark plugs, and filling and emptying piping system. Also, it is installed a heating system with insulation to reduce the heat transfer to the environment. In this another figure is shown a rendering of experimental apparatus. 
The yellow color represents the light propagation reflected by the mirrors and captured with a high-speed camera. This set is an artifact of the flame surface detection, known as Schlieren flame visualization technique. In this figure, we present a typical radius and pressure versus time measured in the reactor for a mixture of isoctane and air at the equivalence ratio of 1.002, pressure 101 kPa and temperature of 398.3 Kelvin. The mass of isoctane injected in this condition is 847.9 mg. The measured laminar flame speed is 52.4 cm per second and the burned Markstein length is 1.017 mm. Given the final measured values of laminar flame speed obtained for a given fuel air mixture, they are usually correlated to equivalence rate, unburned pressure and unburned temperature using different semi-empiric equations. Matt Gauke and Keck proposed a flame speed correlation function in the form of this expression, where these constants can be expressed by this expression presents a very good agreement to measurements in the entire flammability region. There is an extensive database of fuels could be fitted to this equation and it will be used here. For the error propagation, in this work the output variable is the laminar flame speed, which is a function of the input variables and burned temperature, pressure and the mass of fuel. Using the Monte Carlo method, the random errors in the input variables are assumed to follow a known probability distribution density. The input variables, represented here as x, are set by an experimental matrix that defines the desired initial conditions for each test. The real values are influenced by uncertainties in the measurement instruments used and the inaccuracies induced by the environment and the operator. So, it is assumed that the measured values are accompanied by random errors and their respective values, obtained by the following expression, where key is a random variable that follows a known probability distribution density. The desired operating conditions for the measurement are the fuel mass, the unburned pressure, unburned temperature, and the equivalence rating. So, the desired fuel mass is obtained from the following equation the mass of the air and the stoichiometry ratio. The estimated laminar flame speed is then calculated using the equations proposed by Metkalki and Keck. Finally, the effects of the errors in the input variables may be expressed as sensitivities calculated by this another expression. Now about the results and analysis. A mixture of isoctane and air was selected for this study since it is representative of the behavior of oil derived light liquid fuels. Its flammability limits and flame speeds are typical of automotive fuels. The coefficients for the laminar flame speed correlation are given in the following table. The measurements for a mixture of isoctane and air at the temperature of 398 Kelvin and pressure of 100 kPa resulted in an average flame speed of 56.1 cm per second and confidence interval of plus minus 1.2 cm per second. Individual errors in mass, temperature, pressure and volume were estimated and are consistent with this overall error in flame speed. These conditions and estimated errors are presented in this another table. For the simulation, the convergence of the Monte Carlo method was assumed after 10,000 samples. The figure presents the spread of the values of laminar flame speed calculated from the Monte Carlo runs considering the simultaneous effect of the typical errors on all inputting variables. The results indicate that the effect of measurement errors increased towards the linear and richer equivalence ratios, reaching a confidence interval of plus minus 3.5% at equivalence ratio of 0.7 and plus minus 3.6 at 1.4. There is a minimum error bar of plus minus 0.72% at the equivalence ratio 1.16. The behavior illustrated in this figure can be better explored as the effects of each individual variables are sorted out. 
Here, the figure presents the values calculated considering the individual effects of the errors in temperature. The errors in the laminar flame speed caused by errors in temperature have a minimum at equivalence radio 1.27 as a result of the combined effects of temperature and equivalence radio and directly in laminar flame speed. Now is presented the effects of the errors in pressure. For this case, it is observed that the errors have no effect at the equivalence rate of 1.1, where the laminar flame speed reaches a maximum value. This means that the effect of the errors in pressure directly in laminar flame speed are small. Now for the results with, the, with the effects of the errors in mass of fuel, we observe a similar behavior for the last case with the defects of the errors in pressure. Again, it is observed that the errors have no effect at the equivalence ratio 1.1, and at this point, the laminar flame speed reaches a maximum 2. The errors in the pressure and mass of fuel mostly affect the laminar flame speed for different values of equivalence ratio. Now, about the sensitivity analysis, this figure summarizes the confidence interval illustrated in figure with all errors associated. At the equivalence ratio of 7, all errors contribute approximately equally to the total error in the laminar flame speed. At the equivalence ratio 1.1, the error is entirely due to the errors in temperature. Conversely, at the equivalence ratio 1.4, the errors are primarily due to the errors in pressure and mass of fuel. Now, is presented the relative sensitivities of the individual errors in the errors in laminar flame speed. The results indicate that at low equivalence ratio, positive errors in temperature and mass of fuel results in positive errors in laminar flame speed, while the opposite occurs with the errors in pressure and volume of the reactor. The situation is inverted at a high equivalence ratio. The sensitivities presented in the last figure are listed in this table. At higher temperatures, the effect of temperature in the overall errors is reduced. The relative errors are insensitive to the increasing pressure, due to the practically no variation of the errors in laminar flame speed for this case. So, regarding the conclusions about this work, the analysis of the base case for a mixture of isoctane and R at the temperature of 398 Kelvin and pressure of 100 kPa and associated errors, under these conditions, the results indicated that the effect of measurement errors in the input variables increased toward the linear and richer equivalence ratios, about plus minus 3.5% at 0.7 and plus minus 3.6% at 1.4. Also, in the results, there is a minimum error of plus minus 0.72% at the equivalence ratio of 1.16. The confidence interval in the values for laminar flame speed for the range of 0.4 at 1.4 remains under plus minus 3.6%. About the individual effects in the input variables, the errors in laminar flame speed caused by errors in temperature have a minimum at the equivalence ratio of 1.27. Also was observed that the errors in the pressure and mass of fuel have no effect on laminar flame speed at the equivalence ratio of 1.1, where the value reaches a maximum. This means that the effect of errors in pressure directly in laminar flame speed are small, and the errors in pressure and mass of fuel mostly affect at a different equivalence ratio. The analysis of the relative sensitivity showed that errors in temperature are more important at a low equivalence ratio and those of pressure and mass of fuel at a higher equivalence ratio, which affects more the laminar flame speed. The results also indicate that a relatively precise measurement can be obtained at the equivalence ratio around the stoichiometry by just minimizing the errors in temperature, since the errors in the remaining input variables have a relatively small importance at this equivalence ratio. The minimization of errors in temperature require a uniform heating 
and measurement of the temperature in several positions around the reactor. Also, higher temperature contributes to the reduction of the effects of the errors from the temperature. Here, I finish my presentation and thanks for your attention.